Everybody there? All right, now I have another question. How, how is it that I have the ability to go out and see anything on a network? So here I go, BWP. How can, listen carefully, now I just showed you one way, now I want to throw you, I want you to stay with me. We're going to shift gears. How can I see things on the network? We know that you can't be seen unless you have server services on, yes? So what software allows you to go out into a Windows network and see servers? Not Dells, not HPs, but the, how can you go out and see server services running on Windows? That was a good start, but I'm going to take you down a different road. So listen to me carefully. I can go on the network and see PCs, yes? Now you've learned, if you can see PCs, that means that every PC has what service turned on? Servers. So when I see you can go out and look in the network and see server services running, what software allows you to see that? This is so important. Did you know you had special software that allows you to see PCs running server services? Is it like the discovery services? thing with like... All right, are you ready? Here we go. Computer Management Console. Hang on, servers, we're going to go to services, and I'm going to scroll down and show you the service that allows you to see anything on the network. So I'm going to look at it. That's the software that allows you to go out and see PCs that are running server services. You have to know this. Grandma is not going to know this, folks. This is the software that allows you to see Windows PCs that are running server services. Watch. I'm going to go to this one and I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to right mouse click. I'm going to go into stop. Everyone see it? Stop. I'm going to stop this service. And I'm going to say, yeah, it says, uh, if you stop this one, you're going to stop a couple. Yeah, go ahead. We're going to stop the service. All right. Can I normally see that computer? Yes. It says, no, I can't find it. In fact, if I go to network, if I go, uh, let's go find um, Jeremy, VWP, B126-S01. No. Can I see anything? Mm -hmm. I can see no server services that are running on the network if I turn off workstation services. So two very, very, if you don't get this, you're going to miss so much stuff. Workstation services allows you to see server services. Mm -hmm. Workstation service allows you to see anybody on the network that has what service on? Server. If I turn off workstation, you can't see anything. So if I hire Kirsten, and I realize she's always out there looking at things on the network. She's really nosy. And I say, hmm, I'll fix her. So I'll go onto her PC as an administrator and I'll turn off what service? Workstation. You know what? That deal ain't that much. She won't see a server, she won't see a work, she won't see nothing on the network. She everything on the network is gone. Because the software that allows her to see it is turned off. Are we comfortable? S workstation allows you to see Everything. server services running on PC so you can see them on the network. If you don't have server service running, you're invisible, okay? So now let me give you one more one more good tip. All of this, let me let me go back. This software here, listen very carefully. This software right here and this software right here are proprietary and copyrighted and owned by who? Microsoft. Microsoft. Microsoft owns that software. It's copyrighted protected. You cannot use server service or workstation service on any other platform. So my question to you is, how do Linux boxes and Macs see server services or PCs on the network? They do. And they have their own. They do. 
But they don't use those two, do they? No. Because those are copyrighted and licensed and protected. So how does a Mac, trust me, you can put a Mac out here and it'll see all of you. It'll see your service running. And it can go out and browse a Windows network. So how does Linux and Mac get away with doing the same thing Microsoft does without owning the software? You're all quiet. All right, let me show you how they did it. <clears throat> they reversed engineered. In the early days of Linux, a group of engineers came and they reversed engineered. Listen carefully. They reversed engineered. Samba is the name for both uh, Samba servers and you can get Samba workstation. And you, we've had that ability since when? 1992. So a bunch of engineers came and reverse engineered workstation service and server service. It acts just like a Windows 10 server service. It acts just like the workstation service that Microsoft produces. And it costs you, so Linux uses Samba, Mac uses Samba, Everybody out there that wants to see Windows devices uses Samba. But Linux wanted to be able to see what? Windows. So they incorporated Samba services. They don't call them services, they call them daemons. Remember daemons? Yeah. <laughs> so they install a daemon that's called Samba Workstation and they install a Samba server and it acts just like what? Your Windows. And it communicates between us. Talks just fine. Because they reverse engineered everything it took to look at your Windows PC and yet not use the proprietary copyrighted <laughs> versions of those two services. Let me show you. Everyone see this router? Yes. How many think it has Windows in it? It's Linux, right? <laughs> <laughs> this does not have Windows in it, okay? This has actually got an embedded form of Linux. So let me ask you, how does a embedded Linux share that flash drive so your Windows PC can see it? Damon. Hello? Damon. How do they do it? Damon. They have Samba on this thing. So they can take that flash drive and they can share it to the network and all your Windows PCs can because they have a daemon in here that mimics server service. And how much did they pay for it? Zero. Nothing. It's reverse engineers for free. So I can go right now. Let's go take a look. Let me go take my browser. I'm on this router. And I can, look at here. What does it say? So I can take that flash drive. In fact, I've enabled what? Share. I've enabled sharing on this. And I said, who can log on? Anybody. And you can get to this uh, flash drive from the network because this has a server service to share files and folders. Wow. Does that make sense now? Mm -hmm. So let's go take a look. I'm going to go. So with a little bit of playing, we were able to get the USB to be recognized. So let me go back here and so let me type in backslash backslash 192.168.1.1. And there's the USB served. As you can see the daemon, the SMB, the SAMA service is on. We can open it up and there's the winning directory that we created. And so you can see we're now sharing a USB flash drive to the network using the Samba server service. And it's visible at home to Windows PCs, just like if you had a Windows server sharing it using the server service. The protocol that makes all this work, this is based on a protocol. This is one you must know. It's called SMB. This is the Microsoft protocol that allows you to talk to devices, see folders, see files. It's exact, exactly what Samba uses. It's exactly what Microsoft. It's called SMB. That is a test question on the CompTIA. SMB is how you see shares, how you see folders, how you connect to printers. 
The server servers and the workstation servers talk via a protocol called SMB.